All right, I'm gonna try and be as quick as possible. This may end up being a slightly long video, but um, I'm not gonna cover any of the stuff like developer mode or anything else that has been extensively covered. I'm only gonna cover how to get rookies, how to get it working, and how to use it properly. All right, so if you have a Quest or Quest 2 or uh, Pro or I think even the 3, you need to first and foremost turn on the thing, get it logged into the actual Quest, get everything set up in there. Then you need to get developer mode going. Once you've got developer mode going, you need to install the Oculus software for the Quest. I'll have links in the description for all this. Then you get the Oculus software open and i'll show you that and once it's open you're going to connect your oculus to it with the cable that came with it and then hopefully you can uh get it set up over here in devices which you see mine doesn't it doesn't necessarily need to work it just needs to install the drivers that will make it work okay so then once you get oculus set up you're going to need to get your ADB drivers. And this is for Windows. This is only going to work on Windows. You can dual boot it on an Intel Mac, but uh, M1 and M2 are an ARM chip, and I don't think it'll work even with parallels. It says it will, but I don't think it will. <clears throat> All right, so after you've done the Oculus setup, now you need to install the Oculus ADB drivers so that the developer mode stuff will work, okay? You get that installed, and I would reboot after each of these steps. Get Oculus set up, get connected with the headset or not, get it just installed, reboot. Then install this, reboot. Then you're going to need to go to the Rookies, uh, what is it called, VRPirates.club wiki, and most of the time, especially with CenturyLink, this is going to be a blocked site because obviously they don't. it's Facebook. They don't want you stealing. So, I mean, copying. We're not stealing anything. We're just making a copy. So this is blocked. And there's a way, if you Google CenturyLink, turn off cybersecurity, you go into your modem or your Wi-Fi and you turn off the cybersecurity option and that turns off the McAfee safe site block thing that blocks you. Then this website will work. And you will go here to download the current version, hit the VRP downloads, and then get the rookie side loader right at the top. All right. And that's going to download into a zip. You're going to extract it. There's only going to be about three files in here. There's an Android side loader, I think a JSON file, and then, yeah, right there. And then the side loader launcher. Open the side loader launcher, and you're going to have this. And you need to. Don't let me forget, you need to extract the download to like C colon slash RSL. It needs to be right at the top. Don't put it in program files. Don't put it on the desktop or documents or anywhere that could be blocked. You may even have to make an exception for this download before you even extract it in your antivirus or your, you know, whatever, anti-malware, spyware. Because again, Facebook is paying big money to block this stuff. So... Exempt it from your firewall and or your uh, yeah your firewall and your antivirus, um, and then once you double click on the side loader, it's going to open up and look like this. <clears throat> now, you're going to need to again connect your Oculus through the USB cord, and it's going to detect it. And inside the Oculus, you're going to need to click allow. But if you click at the very bottom, it's not a button. It just says at the bottom always allow from this computer. Hit that, and that way you don't have to do it every time you connect. Now, you search, or wait, first, go to settings. This always messes up. This delete game after download and install is automatically on. Turn that off. We don't want it to delete the game after download and install. We want to keep it. That way you can put the game on the Oculus. If you don't like it, you can delete it off, but you still have it, so you can put it back on later, vice versa, whatever. Um, these other settings are not that important. Apply settings and then open settings again and set download directory. And I set my download directory to just an APK folder on the desktop. And then you can also open it from here and whatnot. So you set your settings. Now you're set, you're ready to download. So you're gonna go and let's say we want the new Iron Man. And it's just gonna find Iron Man for us just by typing it in. Now, when you double click it, if you're connected to your device, 
it's not only going to download it, it's going to install it as long as you have enough space. And it'll take a while. It'll say down here in green, copying C colon backslash RSL or APK, whatever. <laughs> That'll take a while depending on the size of the game. But if you're not connected, like I'm not connected to my device right now, and I let's do a different game that I don't have. Like, uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, let's do Pistol Whip. All right, so there's Pistol Whip, and you just highlight it and then hit enter or just double click it. And it's gonna say, hey, um, your device isn't connected, retry or cancel. You're just gonna hit cancel. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna start downloading it to that APK folder you made, but it's not gonna install it. And since we unchecked delete, it's gonna leave it in that folder, okay? So let's assume, if you click here, by the way, it takes it out of the queue. It literally deletes it, stops the download, etc. All right, so let's assume it's already finished downloading and we've connected our device. So we see up here, you just shouldn't have to hit mount. It does it automatically. But if it's if you don't see it, automatically hit mount or hit refresh all. And then you'll see down here your size and how much space you have left and blah, blah, blah. So now you've downloaded a bunch of games. You've got this entire folder full of games and you see if you click on like phone lab inside of there there'll be like a release and an apk and a folder and that's where the objects are the actual game itself so we got to take this whole folder let me move this over you take this whole folder while your device is connected to the side loader and you drag and drop it right into the queue and if you drag it to the queue the whole folder Boop. it'll start saying at the bottom in green, copying, C colon, APK, blah, 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 blah. When that green goes away and you get the pop-up box says, okay, stream loaded, whatever, successful. You can even go up here. You can hit refresh all. And then in this drop down up here, I'm going to hit cancel. In this drop down up here on your device, it'll show the app that you just installed. And if it's there... Then you go into your app library inside the VR, bottom right corner, the little gray box with the nine dots and it hit that. Your app library will show up. And if you're successfully entered developer mode, if not hit search and then you'll have the option. But if you're in developer mode up top right, it should say, you know, what apps it's showing and it says all 24 or whatever, hit that drop down and then hit unknown sources at the bottom. And there's all your games, literally every game there's a list of maybe 10 games that won't work because they have DRM or you're connecting to a multiplayer server and it's checking it purchase or whatever, but it's maybe a handful of games. Literally every other game that's ever come out for the Oculus is on this thing. And that's how you do it. You either download it with it connected and it'll put it right on the device. But if you're just trying to download games to have for later, turn off delete after install don't have your device connected and then just download everything you want in the queue and it'll do it in the background. You can close and like minimize it and just let it run all night. And then uh, drag and drop the whole folder right onto the queue when your device is connected. That's what I figured out. The, d the drivers, all of that have to be done right. Um, you may even have to put in a DNS in your Wi-Fi change your DNS to 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1 or whatever uh, the DNS.com uses. And that way <coughs> your um, IPF, uh, IPS, Internet Ser ISP, Internet Service Provider doesn't block the website. And that's how you do it right there. Thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, keep on modding.